Well, with the tragic loss of war photographers Tim Hetherington and Chris Hondros killed in Libya late last month, as many of you know, a new feature film by my next guest comes at a strangely appropriate time. The Bang Bang Club is a drama based on a group of four real-life photographers who chronicled apartheid-era violence in South Africa during the early 1990s. Their work garnered Pulitzer Prizes and filled the front pages of some of the world's most prestigious newspapers and magazines, but their images also raised an important question. When you're so close to human suffering, at what point should the war photographer put down the camera and step in? The film explores that question and puts these photographers on the other side of the lens. Gemini award-winning filmmaker Steven Silver wrote and directed The Bang Bang Club, which stars Ryan Felipe and Canadian actors Taylor Kitsch and Malin Ackerman. Prior to this movie, Steven Silver, Silver had been best known for his documentaries, which have covered subjects that include suicide bombings and the Rwandan genocide. The Bang Bang Club is his first feature, and it's a story that hits close to home for the South African-Canadian filmmaker who grew up as a witness to the horrors of apartheid. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Steven Silver. Good to have you here on the occasion of your your film coming out. Thank you for this. Uh, It's it is eerie timing with uh, photojournalist Tim Hetherington and Chris Hondros uh, being killed in Libya a couple weeks ago. Uh, Given the subject matter of your film that's just come out, what went through your mind when you heard about their deaths? We heard about it as the film was uh, premiering at the Tribeca Film Festival, which was its the the head of its uh, U.S. release, and it really cast a shadow on on that on that first night. The first, you know, the one thing to say about it, I think, is that there's a reasonable chance that if we had released this film two months from now, three months from now, we would have been talking about another journalist casualty uh, from some other war zone. Um, I think there's been a massive uh, reduction in safety um, and working conditions for journalists covering combat zones. And... uh, uh, the last two casualties are evidence of that. Stephen, you're a documentary filmmaker who's now turned uh, to telling a real-life story as a fictional film. Why do this film as a feature and not a documentary? Many reasons. One is because two of the protagonists uh, in the film are dead. Uh, the Bang Bang Club were four very young photographers who became famous uh, in the early 90s for having this talent uh, to find the Bang Bang. They just had a knack for finding um, those extraordinary photographs which they would bring to newspapers and magazines around the world. But two of them had died. There were four of them. Uh, two of them won Pulitzer Prizes. Um, and I wanted to tell the story of all four of them. And uh, that would have been hard with two of them already dead. What impact did they have outside of South Africa in terms of telling those stories? What they really covered was apartheid's last war. It's the four years just before Nelson Mandela is released. That war was a covert war waged by the South African government uh, to try and weaken the ANC and Nelson Mandela um, as they were negotiating South Africa's first democratic election. So what happened in that, in that war was that uh, over almost 20,000 people died in those four years, which is more people than had died in the 35 years of apartheid preceding it. That was not spoken about because what f- followed closely on its heels was the, was the election of Nelson Mandela. Hmm. So people were focused on this celebration. Um, they didn't really look back to the previous four years. Those photographs document those four years and shone a light into, uh, into a war that I, I think was quite hidden. The, the four characters, these guys at the center of the story, have, have some things in common. They're white, mm-hmm. they're men, they're young, mm-hmm. they're competitive. Uh, how would you characterize the kind of people they are? I suppose to some extent, well, they're familiar to me because I grew up through that same period in South Africa. They're a little bit older than I am. And I think each of them in their own way could have, well, each of them could have chosen and made a much easier choice. Like most white, white people in South Africa, they could have lived a life of houses and swimming pools and shopping malls that was immediately available to them. What was unusual about what they did is they chose to walk 10 kilome- or drive 10 kilometers down the road to document a brutal conflict that was happening in their backyard. That's what they had in common. Um, I think for their motives for doing that were complicated. I think it was partly because they wanted to 
engage with those stories. I think they wanted to be photographers and they knew that that's where the great photo, you know, photographs that people would buy would be found. Um, I think once they started selling those photographs, they also found that some, with it came you know, some cash, which was great when you're in your early 20s, and, uh, and some glory too. Well, some cash and glory, but some difficult decisions, perhaps ethical decisions too. I uh, you, you mean, you don't gloss over your portrait of these guys in, in Bang Bang Club. Uh, for example, Kevin Carter, uh, played by the BC-born actor Taylor Kitsch in, in this film, who was behind the most famous, uh, fo or a famous photograph of a vulture stationed behind a starving Sudanese child. Uh, it went on to win a Pulitzer Prize. The sub, it also became the subject of controversy at the time. Uh, tell us why. He took a photograph of, uh, he was in southern Sudan, um, just outside a, a refugee camp. Um, he took a photograph of a small Sudanese uh, child um, who had, was crouched over um, on the ground and it was being stalked by a large vulture. And he took this photograph when he came back, the photograph went all around the world, front page of the New York Times, uh, it would go on to win a Pulitzer Prize, but people started to ask him what he had done. Did he shoot the vulture away? Did he save the child? And he never really answered what he did very clearly. It seems um, confirmed that he did shoot the vulture away. Um, he says it's likely that he actually didn't pick up the child. There is an argument out there which says that the child was not in danger because what was happening was that mothers going to this feeding station would leave their kids 10 meters back, go and get food and come back and pick them up. But, but now, what have you learned about that question of where a war photographer should be putting down the camera and intervening? Where is the ethical line? What I've learned is that, and the film is very careful not to answer that question. It just, you know, I, I would not, because I don't think, what happens in reality to photographers is that there are times they do and there are times they don't. There are contexts in which they do help, where they feel they regret having help because they missed a photograph which maybe would have done more than, that, for that, than what they, had, they managed to do for that person who they helped. And there are moments where they don't help and wish they, and, you know, and regret not having helped. Uh, I think it's very contextual, and I don't think there's, there are obvious questions. And by the way, uh, Kevin Carter, uh, as people may remember historically, went on to uh, kill himself, uh, yeah. uh, haunted by what he said, the images of, of, of that time. I, I've only got 30 seconds left with the air, so yeah. we'll have to make a brief. brief. But uh, I, I'm thinking about you, and I know that you take your ser subjects quite seriously, and you've done these documentaries in the past. Do you, did you have any concern that by doing a big feature film with big, attractive actors who uh, do a great job in the film, but that that, that would somehow take away from the gravitas of the message? My concern was actually the reverse, that I would make a film that was too dark and that nobody mm. would see. It was also important to me, for me that, that, that people had a sense of why they did it, that they, don't, they never got up in the morning having to drag their heels to work. Mm. It had a kinetic energy. There was a visceral quality that drove them. And I think while for seasoned photographers it's much more measured, these guys were in the early 20s. And there was a lot of uh, adrenaline that, that drove them into this kind of work. It's good to have you here. Thank Thanks. you for this. Nice to meet you. Steven Silver. He's the writer and director of the new film, The Bang Bang Club. For Showtime's visit, thebangbangclub.com. Cue at cbc.ca, Twitter, Gian Gameshi. Back in a moment. <laughs>